Hi everyone, it's Kim and welcome back to Bookmarks and Breadsticks. Welcome back to Bookmarks and Breadsticks. If you're new to my channel, I focus on everything in the food writing space. And remember that food books are not cookbooks. Food books span the areas of things like biographies, chef memoirs, culinary nonfiction, food history, anthropology. I mean, food just connects to all areas of our life. It's December 28th when I'm filming this, and hopefully I'll actually have this video up tonight, December 28th, or the algorithm will hate me. I'm here to bring you my December wrap up. Now there are a couple of days left in December. So let me start with what I'm currently reading and hope to finish in the next couple of days. I am currently reading Donut Fall in Love by Jackie Lau. This was sent to me from the publisher. So thank you very much again for sending. This comes from Penguin Random House. So I'm just a couple of pages in. I am off from work this entire week. So I'm using this week between Christmas and the new year to really catch up on a lot of my business endeavors with bookmarks and breadsticks my YouTube channel and getting a couple of things ready for my crowdfunding campaign in the spring, which you guys will hear more about in upcoming videos. So I really wanted to just stick with one last fiction book for the end of the year. It's just over 350 pages. And after really busting my butt through nonfiction November, I didn't set a TBR this last month. I really just wanted to relax. So let's go ahead and look at all the different areas and books I've been reading in December. Starting first with nonfiction, and I've already put up my favorite books of favorite nonfiction books for the year, but I really just have to add Our Lady of Perpetual Hunger, a, a memoir by Lisa Donovan. So Lisa Donovan uh, narrates this book. She narrates her audiobook, and I know I, I don't want to apologize, but I've been reading, I've been listening to a lot of audiobooks lately. And I think it's because if I can, again, if I can find a chef or a writer who's going to narrate their own book, I'm a sucker. I'm in. I want it. Um, it's such a good story. It's really dark. This is a heavy content warning book for um, rape, suicide, minor eating disorders. Uh, there's a lot in here, emotional abuse, verbal abuse, etc. So just go with that with a great, uh, a, <laughs> a grain of salt or a moment of caution. But Lisa Donovan, um, she is a Southern pastry chef and she helped establish some of the biggest pastry, the biggest, um, biggest restaurants in the South during like this recent resurgence in Southern cuisine. Um, but she's always felt this sting from the industry of never quite being paid what she deserved, respected the way she deserved because she was a woman. Um, and she has survived assault and abuse. And she's a young single mother at the start of this book. So she has been through a lot. But the things that got her through this, her salvations were food, self-reliance, and a network of women who stood by her in the kitchen. And she, it's, it's searing, it's beautiful. It chronicles her life, the ups, the downs, the in the restaurants, out of the restaurants, the relationships in her life, including her ancestral relationships with her roots and how abuse can be generational. It can be bred into your family. It's, um, it's just so powerful and sorry for the car horn behind me. Um, it is a powerful book, a powerful book. I know this has been on the TBRs or on the wish list, at least as I saw on the story graph for Olive and, um, the book bully. And just guys, you have to read this book. It is extremely powerful. Let me just read the um, quote on the back for you. It's a story of making a life, a life of love, of community, of commitment to the flame of creativity that somehow manages to burn against all odds. Lisa Donovan has written nothing less than a story of making a life in our times. I would add this to the favorite books of the year, um, even though I already posted this video. I loved it. I just finished it two days ago. <laughs> Next up is the only other nonfiction book I read this month, and this is In the Land of Men by Adrian Miller. I've had this on my shelf for over a year, so I got it off my shelf. Look at me reading my current physical DVR. Yes! Um, this is not a food book. This is actually about Adrian Miller's memoir, about her time in the publishing world. Um, she works at... So Adrienne Miller comes from the Midwest and somehow gets an editorial job at GQ. And it's about her rising the ranks in a world run by men. Um, 
the editing world, publishing world, notorious, and the sexism she endures, um, the legacy of what she leaves behind for GQ, it's amazing. And then a good portion of the book is about her relationship with the late David Foster. Um, a, much, a good portion of this book is also about her relationship with da the late David Foster Wallace, being his editor, kind of, or editing his work for when he was trying to write and get into GQ. Not really he trying to, but she trying to get his short stories into GQ. And it's really about this very toxic relationship these two have. Uh, at some points romantic, at some points not. Um, but you really get to see his illness. Um, he died by suicide. And it's just a lot. And Adrian Miller, for someone who self-described um, as naive girl from the Midwest, really stands on her own in this world, um, but has to learn and really grow as a leader along the way. It's a beautiful book. I also listened to it because Miller narrated the book. I was actually flying back and forth to Chicago. I had a one-day trip, and this was great for in the airports, in the Uber rides, on the flight, um, and I'm really glad I knocked this out. Next up, I have to say our graphic novels. I was on a little bit of a graphic novel binge. Next area is all graphic novels. I just went on a graphic novel binge. I was reading them at night before bed. So I have Oishinobo a la carte. I read the first of these for Book Buffet. I read all about rice. So I finished the, the, the books, excuse me, um, for vegetables, pub food, which was super interesting to learn about, and also ramen and gyoza. Again, these, if you don't know about these books, these are four panel comics that exist in Japan that have been around for decades and 100 million copies of it were sold year, um, worldwide, or at least in Japan. So Viz Signature, the company that um, owns the comics, bounded up these books as a la cartes. So the idea is that each is a food topic, ramen and gyoza. So each volume follows Yamoka and his colleagues through another adventure on their quest for the ultimate venue. Now, the highlights from the 100 plus volume series have been selected and compiled into a la carte editions, bite-sized chunks of a story arranged by subject that add up to a full course meal manga. So if you're someone who really wants to know the story and the evolution of these characters, you're not gonna get it. Um, in some chapters within the manga, like the lead couple isn't together, in some they're married, in some they're just friends. You will skip back and forth across time, across years, and different relationships, all for the sake of the topic working together, which for this one is gyoza and ramen. So just a heads up, but I have three more of them left, and I have really, really enjoyed them. I've really come to love um, anime and manga or food manga, I should say. It's been really fun to read. And this one, I love this because this is almost like nonfiction. It's definitely narrative storytelling, don't get me wrong, but it's, there's so much information given to you. It's a lot of fun. Next up is After the Rain by June Maya Uzuki. I actually watched this as an anime off of Amazon Prime, and I ha loved it so much that I just wanted to start owning the volumes. So this is about Akira Tachibana. She was the star of her high school track team and then injures herself. And in this time of no longer having her purpose, she wanders into a family restaurant and the kindness of the manager there, Kondo, uh, wins her over and now she has a crush on the manager. She works there. And what I kind of, it's, it's definitely a love story that is the, main motivation but what I love about the books the manga excuse me is that it really while we do see Akira at school most of the book and the universe is about being in this restaurant and I love stories where you just exist in one place where a restaurant kind of feels like separation or escape from real life it is a very beautiful story and I'm very much enjoying my reread of it and then the final manga physically that I have is the Savior's Book Cafe story in another world, uh, based on the novels by Kyoka Izumi. So this is the only book I got for Christmas, and I got it from Dan. And he said it was an impulse buy, but it just felt so much like me. Um, so Tsukina is the, our heroine. She is transported by God to another world as the save, one of the saviors, um, but she's 33. And she's like, yeah, don't you normally send young saviors to another world? I'm 33. I kind of enjoy my life. I've got things set. 
no thank you God. And God's like, well, you have to go. And she's like, well, then can I ask for anything I want? And he's like, yeah, I'll grant you a wish. He's like, can I have more than one wish? And he's like, yes, nobody's ever asked for another wish, but sure. And she ends up opening a book cafe in this universe. So she has magic, she has certain protection magics, uh, but it's basically a book cafe and it, I am in love. If I was sent to another world, I would be that person who's like, I'm not gonna save the world, I'm gonna open a book cafe. It is so cute. Of course, there's gonna be a romance with like one of the guards, one of the knights. The other savior who was sent into the book has decided to not save the world and really just, um, she has charmed the high prince and now she's kind of just being spoiled and doing whatever the hell she wants. I'm sure that's going to be a plot that comes forward through the book, but for right now, this is a great, easy read. If anyone else is reading this, let me know. Um, I'm a little sad because if you look at like the size of these two graphic novels side by side, um, this is much smaller. I did pay $18 for this, but you're gonna pay $13 for something that feels like it's maybe 150 pages. Um, but it's a really great series. I'm really enjoying it. It just might be one of those, like if I have gift cards or someone doesn't know what to get me, like this is a great light read. Okay, the last of the physical books, I also have a faux love story by Lone Lee. I have a full review of this book as part of my coffee chats where you can see it first on my Patreon. It will become available for a full review on my channel in January. So I don't want to go into too much detail, but it's basically Lin and Bao are high school um, students who really have no relationship with each other because their parents have kept them apart. And finally one night, Bao looks across the street and sees that Lin, the daughter, is just having a hard time running the kitchen one night. And he ex just crosses the street and finally starts a conversation with her. And they learn that they're alike and very different at the same time, both as children of immigrants, both owning, working at their parents' rival pho shops. And finally, a 2021 release. This is The Heartbreak Bakery by A.R. Capita. This follows Sid, no pronouns please. And Sid, after a breakup with their longtime partner, um, bakes their feelings into brownies. And these become breakup brownies. And now 11 different, uh, I think it's six different pairings, but about 11 to 12 different people have gotten in fights or broken up because of these brownies. And Sid is trying to correct all of her problems, especially when one of those couples are the two owners of the bakery where Sid works the proud muffin. Uh, meanwhile, Sid is also getting closer to Harley, the, the bakery's delivery person. So there's a potential romance there. She's uh, Sid is trying to fix the broken romances. It's a very sweet young adult story. And now for me as a reader, I really appreciated the representation. I have never read a, a book with a protagonist that is, Sid identifies as a gender. Um, I have, I'm trying to be very careful because I'm not quite sure of the difference between a gender and non-binary, um, but I've never had this kind of diversity in a cast before. There are um, polyamorous couples, there are same-sex couples, there are some swingers. Like it's really cool to read about very different unique people than very different for them from who I am. I highly, highly recommend this, especially if you love a sweet treat. There are recipes for all of the creations Sid comes up with, including some witty ingredients, like a fistful of hatred, some emotions, some smiles, some tears. Really recommend. So those are the nine physical books I've read. I also read two, two more books. Sorry, I have a missed call and I'm making sure it's not in order for something. I have two more books that I read on NetGalley. So I've been trying very hard to get my NetGalley score back up um, because I realized that you can now get audiobooks on NetGalley. Did not know that. Sorry, newbie over here. I have read The Art of Sushi. This is a docu-comic. So the writer is sent to Japan. He wants to learn about sushi and writes this all together as a comic. And what else was the other one I read? It was also an arc. Sorry, give me a sec. I have to pull it up on the story graph because I don't physically have it. Do, 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 do. It was another food docu-comic book. And it's um, To Drink and Eat Volume 3, Treats and Tribulations from a French Kitchen by Guillaume Long. Um, this also comes out in 2022. So this is another docu-comic and it's really about... Um, if you ever wanted to know how to cook like the French 
and just didn't know what how to cook a mushroom or how to dice a, a garlic clove correctly, this is the comic for you. I enjoyed both of these a lot. I didn't know that docu-comics were considered their own subgenre. Like when I think of graphic memoir, I think of Marjane Sutrapi's Persepolis. So I guess this is kind of the same idea, nonfiction and comic form maybe. Uh, but that brings my total count to date to 11. Plus I'm still reading Donut Fall in Love. So that could be an even dozen. So what do you think about all the books that I've read so far in the month of December? Let me know in the comments below which you're most interested about. Do you want a full review of any of these? And are you interested in potentially blind date with a book, foodie graphic novels, foodie manga, maybe? If I don't hear from you guys, enjoy the end of 2021, onward and upward to 2022. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Mm -hmm.